what's up everybody so we're out of the shop with another shop talk Tuesday and of course we are working on the giveaway knife now I'm not gonna show y'all much of that because I'm gonna save that for the end of the video now we are gonna be working on the finish of this knife so up to this point of course we forged it out we ground down the bevels we went ahead and heat treated it you know and I've broke down all of those different steps so that y'all can really see the finer details of what we were doing on each step this video is gonna be the same I'm gonna break down how I decide on the finishes that I'm gonna put on my knives and what really goes into those now we're also going to break down the finish that we're gonna put on this particular knife but let's go ahead and start with how I decide on what finish is gonna go on to a knife now there's a bunch of different finishes you know are you gonna sand it to a thousand grit buff it and put a mirror polish on it are you going to sand it and put a satin finish on it almost like a brushed finish maybe going up to 220 or 400 grit are you going to put a rougher finish on it are you going to you know do full flat grinds or are you going to leave some of the forged area showing on the ricassos and stuff like that are you going to acid etch? Are you going to acid etch and stone wash? You know, that there are so many things that you can choose from when it comes to doing the finish on a knife. And what I mean by finish is the way the blade's gonna look prior to you putting the handles on. So what is that gonna be? Like I said, a mirror polish, an acid etch, a stone wash. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Now, whenever I'm trying to decide on what finish I'm gonna put on a knife, a lot of it is thinking about the overall package. What handle I'm going to put on it, what pins I'm going to put in it, um, is, it going to, is it meant to be something that is more or less a high polished knife? Not so much the finished high polished, but something that's meant to be more elegant, more well, high polished. <laughs> uh, or is it something that's supposed to look rustic? Is it something that's supposed to you know, look like it was made a hundred years ago you know what are the aesthetics I'm looking for and you know a lot of those I guess you could say finishes come from things that I've done in the past you know uh, whenever I'm trying to decide what finish is going to go on a knife you know I remember okay well I liked this stone wash with this handles type I liked these mirror polishes with these particular handle types um, a lot of that plays together whenever I'm deciding on that. For this, I'm going to do a really nice burl handle scale, and I want the finish to be able to balance really well with that. And the finish I'm going with, as you can see, was a darker finish, primarily because I wanted everything to just have a nice pop. To it. So, what we're going to be doing with this particular knife is a finish that's similar to this knife right here, where we've got the striations going through here. What this was done, or how I achieved this, was using a 36 grit belt and then uh, barely smoothing it out and then acid etching it and sanding, you know, the, the top layer off to be able to get these cool striations. Now with this one, I'm going to try and do this, but intensify it even more. So, <laughs> if that knife didn't give you an idea of the type of wood that's going to go on it, it's going to be a version of the handle material that's on here. It's just going to be a slightly different one. Uh, but the goal for this is, again, figuring out what that package is going to be. You know, in th the next video that we're going to do... Uh, for the Shop Talk Tuesday giveaway video series and all that, uh, we're going to be making the handle scale. So we're going to be picking out the scale material, the liner material, the pin material, all of those things, and we're going to go ahead and attach the scales to the liners and all that stuff so that you can actually see that process, but it's going to be something that will match this overall package. and. Yeah, hopefully that kind of helps you understand what I go through whenever I'm trying to decide on 
a particular finish that I'm going to put on a knife. Uh, and I'll hit on it a little bit more whenever we get to the outro. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead, let's jump into this, and let's get this finish finished. Let's get it. So something to note here, I was using a slightly worn belt whenever I originally started trying to put this uh, these striations in here. And it started doing a little bit of it, but it wasn't getting as deep as I wanted it to. So what I'm doing is I'm switching to a new belt because this has a more aggressive grit. Even though it's the same grit, this still has all the peaks on it. And I want those to dig into this just a little bit more so we get a little bit more uh, valleys ground into this. And uh, it'll leave a better end result whenever we get done with our finish. So we're using a new 36 grit belt for this. So that's what we're looking for right there. You can see those deeper lines that we have going all the way through here. And we're looking for a nice consistent group of lines all the way to the tip. And that right there is going to leave a cool finish whenever we get done doing the acid etch. Because the acid etch is going to intensify this just a little bit more by eating away some of the steel in between those. But that's what we're going for right there okay so now that we got our finish that we want on there so those scratches ground into it we want to kind of knock off some of the high points and even everything out a little bit more with a scotch bright belt now this is one that I've used for a while so it's kind of worn down we don't want anything super aggressive because we're not trying to smooth everything out we just want to knock off some of the the tops here so that's what we're gonna do now See, and all we were trying to do is just knock off a little bit and get some of the edges nice and smooth all the way around. Now we're ready to go ahead and put our maker's mark on here. So the process here is, go ahead and show y'all the knife is in there right now so what we do is in the acid we go in for 20 minutes take it out clean it go back in for another 20 minutes take it out just rinse off the blade to get the acid off of there we're not rubbing it we're just rinsing it off and then we're going straight into the coffee after that so that we can go ahead and finish the etching process so we're just gonna go straight in here so that was 20 minutes out clean 20 minutes back in out rinse off then in here we're gonna leave it in here for two hours some people leave it for 24 hours I'm just gonna leave it for two but the goal is after the second round you do not rub it you just rinse it off and leave any of that darkness that's on there from this etchant leave it on there put it in the coffee and let that coffee darken that even more so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna leave it in here for two hours and then see how that goes
All right, so let's go ahead and wrap the vlog up here. And now that you've seen the process, there is our finish. Now, of course, I have oil on here right now because anytime we acid etch a knife, we want to make sure that for one, we neutralize the acid, but we want to make sure we put oil on here to make sure that we're not getting any rust overnight or anything like that or letting it turn brown. Uh, if you have issues with your blades getting like a brown hue to them after you acid etch it, a lot of times that's because people use WD-40 to oil their blades after they do their acid etch process and that will actually give it a chance to tarnish just a little bit and get that brown hue. Uh, I use mineral oil. This is just food grade mineral oil and I get really good results. It stays black where it needs to be black and it doesn't get any weird tarnish to it so this is what it's going to look like for the future <laughs> uh, now of course it's not going to be shiny like this all the time because this is the oil that's making it this shiny but you can see everything stand out maker's mark is nice and dark we got our nice striations going throughout the whole entire blade definitely has the finish that I wanted it to have and uh, you know whenever I was talking before about trying to decide on finishes and things like that a lot of my finishes are based on knives that I've done in the past and used in the past you know I think through okay well this particular finish looked awesome with this particular handle and maybe I would try something a little bit different with this finish and do a brighter handle or a darker handle and all of that kind of comes into play whenever I'm deciding on what the package is supposed to look like so I go into these knife builds with a rough idea for what the overall package is going to look like but I don't make myself stick to one particular thing because things evolve as they go through the build process you might think well, that didn't work exactly how I wanted it to, so I need to change that a little bit. But because of that, I might need to change the handle material just a little bit, or I might need to add a different color liner, or I might need to add different types of pins. All of that stuff kind of will evolve as you're making the knife, especially on something like this where we are taking a couple of months to make this knife. I typically don't take that long to make one, so it kind of flows a lot faster. This, I get to break it down and think about those things a little bit more in depth because I can decide, you know, in the moment, hey, I kind of want to try this or I kind of want to go this route, you know, or this. I had a week to kind of figure out what I wanted to do finish wise and then got into it and was able to achieve this finish, which is absolutely awesome. It's better than the one that was on previous knife that I did, which is this one right here. This finish on this knife down here actually pops out a little bit more than this one, so it's pretty cool. Now guys, I'm interested to see what y'all think about this. You know, do you think it was the right decision to go with that finish right there on this knife? I think it was. I think it's going to look absolutely sweet, but I want to know what y'all think. Now. Like I was talking about in the intro on the next video, what we're going to be working on is getting the handle scale material together and start making them. So mount them to their liners, picking our pin material. We're going to have to cut the scales down, flatten them, do all that stuff so that we can put them on the liners. I'm going to break that down into more detail. Um, hopefully this video helps you and hopefully that video will help you as well. Guys, that's the end of this one. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other videos. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. Make sure you do that. Uh, turn on the notification bell. Now, I will tell you, 20,000 subscribers is when we're going to be giving away that knife. So, guys, sharing these videos and getting your friends and family to subscribe definitely will help us get there. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. And I will catch y'all next time. Oh, 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 oh,